The other day when I was driving home from work, I was listening to a discussion on Undertale, the morality system it has, and how killing monsters is a bad thing because they're not actually bad. And it got me thinking about Dragon Quest, but I'm always thinking about Dragon Quest. But this time, specifically, I was thinking about the monsters in Dragon Quest, how they're not really bad. Well, I mean, some of them are, but how there's also good monsters. One of the things that I love about the old RPG games is the ability to let my mind fill in the blanks as to how scenarios play out, something that I never really put much thought into until I played games like Undertale and Octopath Traveler, where you have to imagine how these random encounters play out as it fits the narrative. Are these monsters hunting for prey? Are they trying to take advantage of naive travelers? Are they actually evil? Is there a vendetta against humans? What about your teammates? What role or dynamics do they have in the game? I mentioned Octopath Traveler because what are the other members of your team doing while you're progressing through one person's story? That type of imagination filling in type of thing. There's a story unfolding but I can also fill in the blanks where the storytellers didn't elaborate. And so when thinking about monsters, the idea presented in the original Legend of Zelda, it's dangerous to go alone take this, implies that things are going to try and kill me once you embark on your adventure. In other words, the monsters. Why are the monsters trying to kill me? Or simply, why are they attacking? This is a role-playing game. I'm supposed to immerse myself in this story, not just see the monsters as a way to gain experience. The term monster carries a negative connotation when entering a fight. However, is this sliming blue slime from the original Dragon Warrior back in 1986 really trying to kill me? The first monster that I encounter when leaving the castle? Or am I slaughtering a species of creatures because they're that pathetic and I'm desperate for experience in battle as a fleshling warrior? In the later games such as Dragon Quest V, monsters actually join your team after you've earned their respect, which is cool. In that whatever reason fate brought us together, I appeal to them enough that they want to join me in my adventure. On the flip note, Dragon Quest VII has some slimes trying to live their lives in a tower until a traveling musician kidnaps town folks and places them in that tower. They've no interest in actually fighting, not that it would be a challenge for the hero at that point, they just really want to get back to living their normal lives. They helped me so that I would help them, and I'm pretty sure Dragon Quest XI has similar examples that escape me at this moment. The term monster carries weight. Past experiences teach us that monsters are bad and that they should be defeated or uh, uh, killed. But then slimes like the ones in Dragon Quest VII tells us that they're not always bad. I know that the narrative actually has us encounter evil monsters, but Dragon Quest V teaches us that monsters can even become our most dependable allies. And incidentally, I just realized that one of the themes to Pokemon Gold and Silver is to be kind to your pocket monsters. <laughs> that they're not bad and they're not weapons of war, but that's a whole nother thing. Undertale requires us to think about our approach to how we interact with the enemies on screen. But Dragon Quest teaches us that there's also nuance to creatures that we call monsters. Just like the humans that we encounter, monsters are just as nuanced. There are good people, and there are good monsters, just like there are bad people, and there are bad monsters. At some point, it's worth asking why are we fighting these creatures that are fighting us? Besides the obvious level grinding, gaining more experience approach. It could be as simple as self-defense from either side. Dragon Quest XI throws me for a loop because at a certain point, the monsters become possessed by actual evil. So the interactions or the battles that we have with them isn't as simple as a chance encounter with a saber cat that might be trying to hunt. This creature's red eyes tell me that they're not in their right mind. Even though the game doesn't give me the opportunity to be a pacifist the way that Undertale does. Fighting it means that I'm putting this possessed creature out of its suffering. And I think that that's pretty cool. Hey everyone, what did you guys think of this video? I've always wanted to make more Dragon Quest content, but nothing has ever come to mind. I got the idea for this video from the Undertale episode of the Nostalgia Goggles podcast. They're one of my favorite video game podcasts out there right now. 
and so I highly recommend checking them out as well. If you like this video and you want to see more, then consider subscribing to the channel, leave a thumbs up, and comment down below something that you love about Dragon Quest. What did you guys think about the monsters in Dragon Quest? I know a lot of people think that they're cute. I think that they're cute. They're also really cool looking when they're not cute. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys all in the comment section down below. Have a great day. Bye, chat. Thank you.